quiet street in a quiet neighborhood in the middle of the 20th century. What are you looking for? What do you see? Where people lived in square, fine, ample houses, the ferocious slums. Many still stand, many torn down, rebuilding among the dispersal of people and neighborhoods, a way being made for the projects. Signs of change in all the cities and still the dark red blindness of walls. The cities reach out. The ghettos burst open after a long while. Ghettos of every kind. Old borders into the sunny, branchy section, pushing out to the new country, waiting raw for the builders. Some of us still live in uniformity, but the sifting has begun. And when you look further, when you look for a house, you see the city's reach. What are you looking for? A place to live. Your warmth, your love, your work, your rest from work, your quiet and the sounds you like, your privacy, your friends, a good place for children, a place to grow in, easy to keep clean, a place we can afford, the right place for us. And even from the car, we try to guess. What is there for us? Who lives behind these doors? On this quiet street, who lives here? Could this be it? This one? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Dick on the phone right away. Nice streets in a nice neighborhood where things are taken care of well. Why do people come here? All the regular reasons. This room, this is what I mind leaving the most. So many little things. Bob seeing Ginny in her wedding dress here for the first time. That night we got back from the hospital after little Laurie was born. <laughs> Suddenly we were grandparents. Christmases, birthdays. Don't you feel that way about the room? Oh, of course you don't. Sure I do. Well, tonight, when I was burning the leaves, I felt that again. Not just about the room or the house, but the whole neighborhood. There's something about the people here. I just, I just hate to pull out. Well, we haven't moved for ages. When you think of the way most people move all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the year Jenny was born? Three places we lived that year. Wasn't that awful? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's pretty late. Yes? 
Yes, this is Mrs. Candy. There must be some mistake. It was about those people that were here today. You mean because of... I knew it. I knew it the minute they got out of that car. I know somebody was going to throw a fit. But who in God's name would do a thing like that? Oh, you're really very upset, aren't you? Can I get you something? Maybe just a bath. Was it that bad? Worse. What gets into a person like that? Do you know what he said? Hello, Tom. How have you been? Fine, Ed. You? No complaints. By the way, Tom, you going to the lodge meeting Thursday? Always do, don't I? Well, is there anything the matter? I just don't understand you, Ed. You've always been a pretty regular guy. A credit to the neighborhood, too. I'm the same guy I've always been. There's something bothering you. Why don't you just say it? Same thing's bothering a lot of people. I guess we didn't know you as well as we thought. Get to the point, Tom. Come on, Ed, don't pretend you don't understand. Nobody's going to get away with the stuff you're trying to hand out. Now, look here. You look here. Nobody's threatening you. There's never going to be any violence in this part of town. We're peaceful people. You've got friends here. I'm your friend. We just want to know what it is you think you're doing to us. Quiet street, quiet neighborhood. Never any trouble here, none at all. So I got off that bus and came straight here. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Ed, nothing at all. Everybody knows you as an ideal citizen, but well, frankly, let me give you a little friendly advice. Take that sign down. Your house is a desirable property. We'll turn up the right buyer for you. I hear what you're saying, Ted, but don't turn on the bedside manner. You struck me as upset. Tom Elder was upset. Tom Elder didn't walk in my door. <laughs> Can't blame Tom, Ed. People get nervous, you know. They worry. I told them it was probably all a mistake. We all know you wouldn't do anything out of line, Ed. Out of line? What in heaven's name are you talking about? Some people came to look at my house. They were Negroes. I haven't done anything, yet. Well, now, take it easy, Ed. I'm not Tom Elder, you know. Look, let's face it. If you want to sell your house, I want to sell it for you. That's what I'm here for. That's my business. But there's some things you just can't do. That sign. It's a terrible thing. It's sort of an open invitation to anybody. You've been around here long enough to know we don't do things. That way. Now listen. I've had a dozen people in here would have taken your place. But I didn't let them get as far as you. I've got to consider the community. You're leaving. But there are a lot of us who are going to be here for a long time. Now take a tip of an old friend. Forget this whole thing and let me take care of your house. Out of line. Well, that's Ted Motes for you. Well, you either see things his way, or you're out of line. Well, the minute those people showed up, I, I knew there was going to be some talk. But what was I supposed to do, slam the door in her face? Where's Laurie? She was here a minute ago. Oh, she's outside playing with Bobby. He's got a new bike, and he promised to give her a ride. Oh, Bob, mm. how about some fishing this Saturday? Weather's still good. Laurie can come along with no, us. No, nothing doing, Dad. Bob promised to put up the wallpaper in the dinette weeks ago, but he can find the darnest excuses for not doing it. This Saturday, that wallpaper goes up. Oh, who's the boss around here anyway? Ginny, I'll help you with the wallpaper. We can get it done in a few hours with these two out of the way. <laughs> well... to be the same again. At the first sign of the first family entering, the street responds with the old questions. Why do they go where they're not wanted? 
Why in a neighborhood like this? Now the old cries, running the place down and values down, wanting our girls. Now images rise up, riots at night, murder, rape, images of violation, fears that lie deep in people's lives. And a man stands suddenly alone. Are you serious? That's all we've been talking about at our house. Yeah, ours too. Now, the way I see it, school's one thing. It's all right for kids to learn what it's all about. But sure, you know. but when it comes to your home, your home's different. We've got our rights too. They can't force us to live with them. Yeah, just let them try to force this in my block. Well, nice to have seen you, Mrs. Peterson. Nice to have seen you. They play. They play. And of course, they're all different. But what does it mean when one level is kept, one color, one group, what their grown-ups think of as one kind of people, shutting out the rest? Even here, playing, are they cut off from part of life? Are they cut off from part of themselves in refusing to touch the variety, the richness, the texture of reality that is always there for us? These children and this place. If Candy goes through with this, land values around here won't be worth a plug nickel. Do you know what he's provoked around here? I've heard that some young idiots thought they had to protect the honor of the community. Just what Ed's done, I don't know. Well, if you want to hide your head, okay. But I can't. I've had a steady stream of complaints since we opened this morning. That's good, Ted. Shows a fine spirit. That paint splashing was a real violation of this place. When I saw it this morning, I was no, pretty... No, no, Ralph. Complaints against Candy. I see. Well? A flood, you say? From whom? Well, maybe I exaggerated. Tom Elder? Very substantial. Elder. Anyone else? Miss Wesser. Yes. Well, we've both known Miss Wesser for years. What did she say? Well, it wasn't so much what she said. When you're dealing with complaints, it's precisely that. Just what did Miss Wesser say? She said she couldn't stand the, the smell. Listen, I've got nothing against those people, but why go looking for trouble? Property values in this neighborhood will go to pot if we don't stop what Kant is doing. Now look, Ted, I'm a practical man. You don't work for this bank very long unless you are. I have to talk to you from two positions, from my own and from the banks. They're not necessarily the same. We can't have people like Tom Elder and Miss Wesser throwing us into a panic. Land values don't have to go down. Not if the people in the community act like they believe in themselves. No. Here's an article reported in the New York Times which says that the official organization of home appraisal experts finds that land values actually have gone up in this type of situation. Oh, come on now, Ralph. You can do anything with figures, you know that. The important thing is we don't want anything like that to happen here. I've got two daughters, you know. What's the point, Ted? Well, I'd like the bank to get word around that... No, no, strike that out. I hope that you and the bank will reach a policy decision on real estate loans that will reassure the homeowners of this community. And the merchants. And the service companies. That's quite a package. Look, Ted, you know I don't make the decisions around here. I'll tell you what. I'll call downtown and see what they say. Well. Oh. 
If you're not on my side of the fence, at least sit on it, okay? We'll see. It's hard to know what's right and what's wrong. It's the most difficult thing we ever faced. Not just for Ed and me, but for Laurie and Bob and my daughter, and for all the friends we've made. After all, this is our community, too. We leave something here. I was thinking about that very thing. I've heard about what happened. You know what I can't bear? Ed thinks I'm so lovely, so full of the moralities. I looked at that little girl in all her sweetness and blackness, and I thought just that. Just what? Black. That's what I thought. Black, like them, I thought. And everything I'd heard as a child came back to me. Don't go near one. Don't go into cellars, even with one you know. You'll, you'll be killed. You'll be lying in a ditch dead. You'll be worse. But that stain was black. They're not really black, are they? When I looked out of the window and that car drove up and he got out, I thought, no. You know how I was brought up, narrow. No evil, but not much good, as a matter of fact. Not much soul. And uh, no visible body. No poverty. Just enormous blinders of very good material. So something in me went, no. I was shocked at myself. What would you say that was? Some shred of prejudice and an infinitesimal spark of human feeling. Isn't that awful? To be ashamed by oneself? No. That first moment, I didn't want them even to look at the house. And then we got talking and I began to like them. After all, it's a house that they want and that they can afford. And then, when I tried to clean Laurie's dress, Something happened. I want them to have the house. That's the first awful thing you've said, Carol. But I... I want them to be like anybody else. To have a house they want and can pay for. The reason. The fact that it's your anger, your resentment of what happened to Lori, your hatred that's invited them to live here. It's not a motive. Yes, I see. How does the church stand on this? Where do you stand? The church sees it as a challenge. We have a chance here to affirm our deepest beliefs in the spirit, in the variousness of man and the unity of the spirit. But not all the church thinks this way. No, not all. But enough of us. Take a look at this, Carol. It's a declaration of conscience. Uh, statement of basic principles used as a focal point by those people in a community who refuse to allow ignorance and fear and hate to wreck their neighborhood. Now, this problem is the greatest challenge the church has had to meet in a long time. It's not always easy meeting challenges, but this sort of thing can help us to meet our responsibility. It's a place to begin. Sit down, Ted. Hold stand, Ralph. Well, what's the answer? You understand this is an informal statement. It also may be taken as a statement of bank policy. It is concerned only with that aspect of the problem, if it is a problem, that affects us as a financial institution. This bank is in the business of making sound loans properly secured. Period. Sound loans? What does that mean? If this happens here, there won't be many loans worth making, and you know it. I think there will. And there are others in the community who think so, too. In my experience, the question of whether a man pays his debts has nothing to do with the color of his skin or where he came from. You know what'll happen. What, in your opinion? Opinion? This is a fact. A better element will leave. We'll have a slum on our hands. 
Ted. I think that depends on us. All right, Ralph. Now we know where we stand. You go ahead and talk about bank policy, but I'll tell you one thing. Once something like this gets started, you don't stop it. And if anybody around here is going to sell any real estate, it's going to be Ted Moose. One house, its neighbors, confusion of a street. They'll try to keep it from flaring up, but each of them has fears that rage and threaten, threats that seem to come from outside. When you were a child, what was it? The Jews, the Poles, the Irish, Italians, Chinese? These fears are real. About their homes, yes. Is their money threatened? They believe it is. Threat to their social standing guarded so long? They think so. And the law is beginning to recognize this. You can't legislate that. You can't do what? I mean you can't force tolerance by law. Of course you can't. But this has nothing to do with tolerance. This has to do with practice. You can, by law, prevent men from committing crimes against others that are always, in reality, crimes against themselves. That's what law is for. Oh, well, that's all very fine. But how are we going to keep this neighborhood good? We don't want undesirables. We don't want land values to take a nosedive. Well, you know as much about land values as I do. They don't have to do a nosedive at all. This afternoon, I waved an article on property values in Ted Moat's face. I'd really only read the headline myself, but since then I've read it through carefully, and this is what it had to say. It was a study for the University of California on nine San Francisco neighborhoods in which Negroes had bought homes since 1940. Mm, I suppose you're going to tell us property values went up. Exactly. Apparently, there have been dozens of such studies made, and the findings have been that prices go up, not down, if anything, over a period of time. Oh, now I've heard everything. All right. I'm a banker by profession. No heart, very limited kind of head, a man's wallet is his castle, that kind of imagination. All right? Well, let me tell you this. A man's a desirable neighbor if he's financially all right and he doesn't throw beer cans all over his front lawn. Has nothing whatever to do with the color of his skin or his religion or where his parents come from. It has to do with the worth of a person. That's sound economics. Mr. Candy, you're a man of good judgment. Uh, would you say that these people were nice people? You're the first person that asked me that. Yes, they were nice people. Candy, what are you trying to do to us? What grudge got you going against this place anyway? Look, if anybody's damaging this community, it's not Ed Candy. I'm leaving. We've been at this for two hours, and all I know is we're not getting anywhere. All right, Tom. Half the community is ready to pull out, and nobody wants to do anything now, about just it. just a second, Tom. What's been happening here has happened before in other places. It's always to somebody's advantage to stir things up. It's an old, old game that Ted Moats played here today. That's Ted Moats. It's not the whole real estate profession. What happens here, or anywhere, is completely a matter of how people handle themselves. When they act like human beings, the values are as sound as, well, a silver dollar. Ted Moat's figures show different. He spent the afternoon going up and down Elm Street ringing doorbells, literally giving a sales talk. Some of the signs are out already. Sure. And Ted's got 10 new clients and maybe 10 new commissions. Mr. Yates, Mr. Hebner, couldn't you walk up and down Elm Street and tell them that? Well, what we might do, too, is put out our own signs. It's been done. Something like, uh, we're not selling. We believe in our community. Uh, I just don't idea. know. I don't know how we can be good neighbors. Even if the land values stay the same, the street's going to be different. Doesn't that depend on us? Did any of us really choose each other as neighbors? We get along. But how long can we keep the door closed without locking ourselves in? What we must learn is how to keep from poisoning ourselves with fear and barriers and ghettos. Nonsense. Negroes don't live in ghettos anymore. 
Oh, good heavens, look at the housing projects in the city. They're not ghettos. Of course they are. Any place where a human being is shut in or shut out because of the color of his skin is a ghetto, in the real sense of the word. I know that now. I guess I knew it all along, just didn't think much about it, though. But they are ghettos. Well, Mr. Candy, it's not really up to us, you know. It's, it's up to you alone whether the sale will be made. No, Jim. You're wrong there. What I do isn't nearly as important as what you do. That's what this is all about tonight. He's right. We can't duck it. Ed Candy's decision is his own, but that's no longer important. It's what we do that counts. This isn't about one man and his house. This is about us as a community. And it has to be fought out in the white communities. And the white people. Each in himself. Now it's been said, the community is engaged. As we move toward this beginning, there's a quickening of pace. You can see it right here in these people as they begin to face up to their problem. We need ourselves, freed from our old slaveries and exclusions. We are fighting for a sense of community. In order to have that ever, we must look at what we have been excluding. We need ourselves in all our pride of differences to lift the old threat that brought us here. The way we meet the difference in people, this can give us strength. The range, the variousness that we have, this is a source of power always when it is met well and used. This possibility is very great just now. It is whatever we feel and do and think when we go out of here and go home tonight. It is deep in what we are prepared to give, what we feel surely, in the people around us, in ourselves, all the way home.